Hi, I'm Bethany. And this is Disability Talk, where I offer delicious short nibbles of disability content so you can learn all about disability so you don't have to ask weird questions of fabulous folks like myself and my guest. Um, today we have an intercontinental guest all the way from New Delhi, India, and uh, they are a disability justice and queer advocate named Shivangi. Am I saying that right? Yes. Yes. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Bethany. I'm so happy to be here. And that was a beautiful introduction. Uh, I'm so excited to be here, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. Enthusiasm is good. Um, before we get into the interview, um, I would just like to state my pronouns and audio describe my background, uh, as well as me. So my pronouns are she, her, and um, I'm a white femme presenting person with uh, short brunette hair, hazel eyes, red lip, always, just about. Um, I have a sign behind me that reads, Riot is the language of the unheard, seated next to an amethyst. And on the lower shelf that's floating behind me, I have a birth chart because um, Shivangi and I talk uh, quite a bit about astrology. So it's pretty and it's for us and then behind me i have multiple necklaces hanging on the wall as well as a bag um, filled with condoms because sexual health is one of my passions Yay. you you're so um i'm uh, as bethany introduced me i'm shivangi and my pronouns are she her and uh, i'm uh, joining from new delhi india and uh, uh, I'm sitting in my room where I have a, a, a sort of a graffiti uh, of a tree uh, with a huge uh, bark. And it's very, it's a very colorful bark of a tree with one, uh, this side, uh, on the left side, uh, it has no leaves. Uh, the branches are coming out like down below and it has no leaves and it's a it's just a painting or a, gra a wall graffiti that uh, I uh, that's something that I like to do so it's something that I made with uh, some of my friends um, I'm wearing a dark blue top with uh, it's a floral dark blue top with uh, with a netting and it's it's a bit sheer too so uh, I like you know I like the see-throughness of it uh, and then I have my hair dyed pink uh, and it has, it's naturally black, so a little bit of black roots. Um, and yeah, I have a bit of jewelry. I have an amethyst earring, uh, yeah. which is really tiny. And then I have a septum, septum jewelry as well as a little uh, piercing on my nose. Um, um and yeah what else i have a lot of makeup on also like i just have some eyeshadow actually like blue eyeshadow uh and a bit of eyeliner um and then yeah that's it that's all yeah. it, it. It, it looks good with the background so um so we're gonna get into it and it's um these disability shorts are only three questions because i want to oh, hi little baby that also she has a bit of uh, um, uh, injury so we are keeping her in this cone for a little time she's really pissed about that but yeah, yeah kind of shame. <laughs> nobody likes it <laughs> um, so we have three questions and our first one is just um, to talk about what's your passion related to disability justice um, We've talked about it a lot, but what would you say is your? Yeah, so for me, uh, it's it's a lived experience. I I was born with a disability. Uh, I have physical disability, and uh, uh, as I, I as I was growing up, I didn't really talk about it. I kind of shunned it within myself uh, because it wasn't around me. I didn't have a lot of. Um, mentors or examples that were around me uh, who could help me navigate my 
my disability who could uh, not just navigate my disability but also socially un- make me understand uh, what it means to be disabled and how powerful it can be in in my life and uh, and things like that um, yeah. all i had was doctors and like medical professionals explaining it to me um, i also uh because of my disability like uh, i had to go through a lot of um medical like procedures and uh, and so i i came out with a lot of medical trauma because of that um and uh, uh so i think it's that is like the main passion i have with disability is being able to uh, form a community around me uh, of not just like elders that uh, that i learn from but also youth and younger people who are the next you know who are the next who need it like who really not just the fact that they're a next generation but uh, who need it and that we can have an intergenerational learning from each other uh, and also uh, like uh, 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 in throughout my journey i started uh, realizing um, uh, my queerness and what i also realized was that a lot of people with disabilities are uh have some kinds of queer tendencies i i don't want to speak for everyone but i think that uh especially a lot of queer femme and queer women have uh, uh queer you know tendencies behind their their heads um uh, and uh, so that is also another part of uh, community that i want to create around me um um and especially in south asia because that i think is really lacking uh, where in south asia we have mostly like families of disabled people caregivers and families of disabled people who are doing the advocating and i don't think that that works like i, I and it hasn't worked i think uh, and i also want to include a lot more um, caste politics as well as um uh, a poverty and like how all of those things relate to disability so it it's it's definitely like a big part of my life and one of my biggest passion um hopefully a dream is to have a uh, a community center uh, for youth for queer and and trans and disabled youth to come together and uh, celebrate uh, themselves and each other and their our community together um so that is that is the biggest part of my passion uh and i hope to be able to lead to that eventually that that sounds amazing and i think that we are cultivating that kind of community space right now through uh zooming together and through meeting um we met through crip camp uh which is a virtual experience associated with the film crip camp on Netflix that was produced by the Obamas and won at Sundance and hopefully will win an Oscar cuz it's fabulous and exciting but now we're doing this virtual camp where people over a thousand people from all over the world are coming together and there's so much radical potential in our future to do this and i love the idea of an accessible community center where people can come together where it's not centered around things like alcohol or you know late night that it's it's inclusive of all ages because we need that we need those safe spaces absolutely um so uh since you're involved in queer and disability communities what kind of joy and pleasure do you experience from particularly interacting with disability communities because i think you know the dominant narrative is that we're always in pain the medical narrative it's just tragic my life is awful how could i have a sense of humor blah 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 and actually it's really vibrant robust i just want to know what's your joy or pleasure from it yeah i mean for me like the biggest joy and pleasure that i get uh when i talk to disabled people is like the diverse sexual lives sexual and um uh intimate lives that we all uh you know have just within like femmes with disabilities uh 
like that was one uh, some of the first conversations that i when i met uh, disabled people disabled femmes in my life um, for the first time that was some of the first conversations we had about intimacy about relationships mm-hmm. about pleasure and and i think that is something that is so like it 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 makes me uh, when when we talk about those things it's very easy for me to connect to people uh, and so uh, i think and and it breaks the walls i think it breaks the barriers that uh, the invisible barriers the invisible walls that uh, we have when uh, we meet new people especially as disabled uh, kids uh, we instantly form a, a wall around us of protection because there is a lot of um, uh, at least in south asia uh, i can tell you there is a lot of street harassment with for, uh, with disabled people uh, especially disabled people who are, are physic uh, like they they are visibly disabled disabled um so there is a lot of street harassment i still go through that kind of shit in my life where i i can't walk down a street without someone staring pointing making a comment about uh, how weird or whatever like about my body or what i look like so uh, unfortunately that is uh, one part uh, like one of the reasons why a lot of disabled people in india and in south asia have a wall uh, of protection around us and uh, and it's an uh, uh, it's also a reason why a lot of families uh, of disabled youth don't want them to go out into the world because there is harassment because there is they want to protect them right so uh, a lot of uh, disabled people don't uh, ever come out of their houses like they like uh, they yeah they just they, they've always been living in a pandemic world like we are now right. uh, so um so i feel like that is also something that um uh that makes me uh, makes me want to address uh, sexuality and pleasure uh, uh i think like nowadays what i really love talking about is masturbation uh because a lot of people a lot of disabled people who uh, who are single who are not able to uh, or who who don't really go out much masturbation has been a part of our lives for a really long time uh, and i think that people with disabilities are the true like masturbation experts as I, as i like to think in my head so um, so yeah i think like uh, being able to talk about masturbation uh, and uh, yeah pleasure in those ways is one of the most important parts of disability experience um, and yeah definitely that's yeah I love it. And I also think masturbation is so timely right now in a pandemic where so many of us uh, I'm partnered, you're partnered, but not everybody is partnered and they people are struggling with touch hunger and you know figuring out ways to hug yourself, wrap a blanket around yourself to give that feeling and then to definitely deep dive into masturbation is very good. um it's really it's good for the immune system helps you sleep pain reliever there's so many wonderful things and also just learning about your body i just i can't not enough about my clitoris to be honest with you um but, um let's talk about the final question which is really for the pandemic series um i really want to know cuz so many people are struggling right now with what is the future what do you want what do you see for our collective um disability justice future what do you what do you dream of what's what's the utopia we want to make together uh yeah that i i definitely have a lot of dreams for the future uh, i ha- i'm a sagittarius my my the the ruler of my planet is jupiter which is a lot about dreams yeah. and the future so um i think uh, uh besides the the communities uh, the accessible community space uh, i also want to be able to build connections uh, transcontinentally uh, to uh, speak to advocates around the world uh, especially like in in continents like like in in african continents and south american continent continents where there isn't a lot of attention uh, for a lot of the liberation work that they have done 
so um, i think like we can all learn from each other and uh, yeah knowledge knowledge is is really important and uh, i think one another important thing that comes from uh, transcontinental connections is more confidence uh, in ourselves and in our community uh, i think that is also one thing that i feel is sometimes lacking in uh, india and south asian countries uh, um, where disabled uh, like disabled people in south asian countries is the confidence uh, in the disability movement and the disability future that we have together uh because we we rely so much on our families on our uh on our uh, relatives and and uh, uh our immediate surroundings that we it's it's uh it's really important that we have this connection of uh, uh between each other uh and learn from our trans yeah like just learn from our transcontinental counterparts uh, about what like they have done and how they are living their lives uh and and i think that builds confidence and i think uh confidence is a really important part of um uh disability like, like identity where where once you start speaking about uh, yourself um in a more confident way uh, it really changes the whole outlook of people around us and you know and i think that goes back to what you're talking about the joy and how much you want to build a disability community it's so much easier i think for me it's been a lot easier to figure out how to love myself and how to have confidence in things like my body which i have disassociated with um and really focused on my mind and like being around other disabled people helps me remember the beauty and like the nuance and difference because we get this media garbage of what beauty is and it's so stifling just about everything and so it's just like i i fully agree with you that this this confidence in both our methods and our individual selves is so foundational for this um I'm really I'm really excited about the potential of the future and us working intercontinentally um because we we have such different methods and different um just different rituals and I think that these things can be appreciated across the globe and I really like sharing um so I really want to thank you for your time and um if we could just um if you want to share if you have a project you want to plug and then um where we can find you so we could continue this conversation ask questions and um Shibangi and I are talking about how we could turn these conversations into kind of a liberation school where we can continue talking about these in a broader format during this pandemic process so um please reach out to me at disabethany on IG and Twitter. And where can we reach out to you and where would your project, what projects do you want to plug or anything you want to plug? Yeah, sure. So my Instagram and Twitter is, uh, uh, what was it? At disabled Spice. Disabled, disabled Spice, that's right. I can't believe I forgot that. uh so yeah you can find my instagram and twitter uh which is at disabled spice um and uh, uh i think there's a facebook too disabled spice so uh, you can find me there and one of the projects uh, well i i want to plug in two projects that i have uh, one is is called determined art movement it's uh, or short, uh, uh, the short form determined art movement or dam um so that's the graffiti uh, community that i have uh, uh with with uh, some of my artist friends uh where we go around different spaces to make art accessible and uh, open to people um with disabilities and queer people and people who uh, are neurodivergent people who are nervous who have anxiety and stress uh, uh um and just opening up uh 
that kind of that part of art where they can express themselves uh, without uh, having to be aesthetically beautiful um and uh, then the other project that i want to plug in is called the second puberty dot com uh, this is a project it's a collaborative project with uh, two other uh, queer and uh, south asian um, uh, youth that uh, i recently started i think it's just a month a month old um, and it's basically a, a platform it's just a website where you where people can come and ask their awkward questions anonymously yeah that's great we all have awkward questions we want to ask anonymously even this little sexologist who's been studying for <laughs> goodness well over a decade and i still have questions so i love it i love i love the sharing space and i thank you so much um this is disability talk and this is our first one so Thank you for making it an intercontinental delight. Um, it is to you and looking forward to building a movement together. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks.